this is different from West Africa. This is different from Nigeria. It's different from South Africa. Hey guys, so today let's talk about the things I love about living in Kenya. So a little backstory. Kenya has never really been on my radar. It's not, it's just not been there like one of the countries I wanted to visit. I didn't know much about Kenya, all right, until last year when I met my fiance in Ghana and he said, come to Kenya. And I'm like, hmm, okay, uh, I don't know. I'll think about it. <laughs> And yes, here we are. It's been a year. It's been a year. I, I clocked one year last month. I've been being in East Africa. Even though I've been moving in and out of Kenya, I've been to other East African countries. I really wanted to explore this part of Africa and see what East Africa is like. So in case you're new to my channel, my name is Missy. You can call me the Black Coffee. If this is your first time, you're welcome. And if you're a returning subscriber, you know I love you already. Like, I don't have to say it again. But I'm going to say it. I still love you so much. So my name is Missy. Yes, I'm a Nigerian. And I am currently in Kenya. And if you don't know where this beautiful country is located, like, you're like, where is Kenya? This is your Google Maps, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. So let's get right into why we're here today. What I love about living in Kenya. The number one thing I love about living in Kenya is it has to be the people. Yes. Kenyans are very accommodating. They are very, very welcoming. Even though they have their rules and laws and strictness and all of that, they are very accommodating. And of course, there is that one percent that will tell you from time to time that oh what are you doing here go back to your country why are there so many nigerians here blah 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 yeah well <laughs> and like i said because we vlog a lot people feel like oh these nigerians there are so many here there, there's now an influx of nigerian like some people are using english online <laughs> well how many times have you met a nigerian like you're just walking on the road and you meet a Nigerian, like you know this person is a Nigerian, like you just need to see Nigerians here, Nigerians there. If you don't go to places where there are Nigerians, maybe restaurants where they eat, maybe events that they organize, I don't think you would just see any random Nigeria walking on the streets, just whatever. So you only get to, to know that these people are here because we vlog a lot. And like some people will ask me, how do you move around so much and you make so much money? I make so much money because I do things like this, YouTubing, blogging, it's a way to make money if you don't know. So stop asking me, oh, we're tired of this talk, don't talk about, um, you know, don't talk about people moving to Kenya. Do you want me to starve? <laughs> people need this information and you can give them this information and make money from it. So yeah, let's move on from that. Like a lot of my farms on here have told me, just ignore them. They are not the government of Kenya. They don't speak for the whole of Kenya. So just ignore them and focus on my focus. So that's what I intend to do. I intend to just ignore those negative and hate comments and move on to why I'm here. I mean, what I'm doing. So yeah, but Kenyans are very helpful. So whenever you need help with all directions and stuff, they're there to offer helping and or you have to just call them. You might not see them from time to time, like, you know, um, but when you call, they're always there to respond and say, oh, okay, um, yeah. I mean, I've, I, I've met a couple of people that are always there, like, when I call, like, oh, can you go with me to the market? Oh, can you go, where can I buy this? Where can I buy that? They're always there to, like, respond. And, of course, Kenyans are always there to give you recommendations. So, on YouTube, like, I learned a lot from you guys on my YouTube channel. So, they're always telling me, oh, Missy, if you do this, it will do well. If you go to this place in Kenya or you go to that place in Kenya, go and create content here. Oh, do you know that this happens in Kenya? You should go there. Oh, come to this place tomorrow. Something is happening there. And I'm like, oh, my God, you guys are so resourceful. And I love that about the people. They're always there to, like, help your course, you know. When I read some comments, I'm like, oh my God, these people, like, I, I love you guys already. I, I love Kenyans already. Like, they just, they are just so, so sweet. <laughs> if I'm to put it that way, you know, I read some comments and I'm like, oh my God, that is so touching. So yeah, that is 
the first thing I love about Kenya, the people, they are amazing, right? So let's move on to the next thing. The second thing has to be that people over here are very, very humble. People don't show up. Like, you can't know when somebody's rich and when somebody's poor. This is different from West Africa. This is different from Nigeria. It's different from South Africa, where you can see a rich man and be like, oh, that guy is so rich. Don't go close to him. No, Kenya is kind of like everybody's humble down to hell. It's chilled. Um, people don't go about flashing what they have, you know, flashy lifestyle, flashy house, flashy cars, flashy. I mean, you can have all those things, but like when, when people are outside, you really cannot tell who is rich and who is poor. And I like that because it kind of doesn't help make people fall into depression because where I'm from, <laughs> if you don't work hard, it's like nothing is happening in your life. Like, you know, you you have to have it. Whatever it is, whatever you think it is, you got to get it, you know. But here, it's not like people are not working hard. People are working, but it's just that, you know, they are not showing things off. Like, oh, I just bought this new ride. I just bought this new phone, you know. I'm like... You know, someone was asking me the other day that in Kenya, what do I think people prefer, iPhones or Android? And I'm like, I, I've not really seen anybody flashing iPhone up and down. They might have it, but I don't think it's a big deal to them. I don't think it's a thing or it's like, a, you know, so Kenya is that chilled and people are that humble over here. Okay, so the next thing for me would be the weather. Oof, guys, as you can see right now, it is really chill. Like, there's no sun on my face and I'm sitting outside. So, Kenya is really, like, the weather is really cool. I love it. Like, even when there is sun, it is still very, very cool. Like, there's sun, but you're feeling cold. <laughs> Sometimes you feel like, am I in Europe? Like, is this still part of Africa? What is going on here? And there are places in Kenya that it snows. It literally snows. And I can't wait to go there. I need to go see those places and explore more parts of Kenya. But yeah, regarding the weather, the weather is really calm. Some days you would have to sleep with two blankets. You would have to wear socks, wear everything. But I am game for this weather because it's good on my skin. As you can see, I'm glowing. Because like where I'm from, oh my God, the heat is a lot. The weather is hot. And um, the time when you start to get cool weather is when it is raining or when it is Christmas period, when it becomes, there's Hamatan. So it becomes like chilled and all of that. But, but apart from that, it is very, very hot. And then it feels like everybody's crazy. People are shouting all year round and, you know, stressed out because the weather is so hot. And I think that is one of the reasons why Kenyans are so like chilled. They are so cool because like this place is not hot. Why are you shouting? Do you understand? Why will you be the only person raving mad and being angry anyhow in a place that is really calm and nobody is shouting? And so I think that is one of the reasons why Kenyans are really like cool because like no sun is burning them, no nothing. Even when there's sun, you're still not feeling uncomfortable because the weather is still really breezy. So that is one thing about Kenya weather. Another thing I would say I love about Kenya is community. Yes, wait, I'm going to explain that. <laughs> so as Nigerians, we complain a lot that, oh, there's no community in Kenya. In Nigeria, you know, we all live together, we eat together, blah, blah, blah. I think I've come to appreciate the fact that that is not really a thing in Kenya because um, I'm, I, I enjoy my space. I just enjoy my space. So, yes, I want community. I want family. I want friends from time to time. But I also want them to, like go away when i need to be in my space and some people don't understand boundaries and if you're not careful they're in your face like every other day just cup of call i'm here i've arrived like guy babe you didn't tell me you're coming what are you you know that is how it is in nigeria like people just like oh we're friends now even in ghana oh i mean we're friends so why not i can just but you know having lived in ghana for a, a long time i i've come to enjoy my own space because i had limited friends i had i had less people that i know so it's just me and me alone except for okay the people that we live together in the compound which 
some of them are Nigerians and you know we became friends we would hang out I can say they are like my buddies they're like my friends in Ghana so those ones we could hang out today I could be in this person's room just chilling if I get bored staying in my room I can you know and then we we sometimes we don't even see in days that's how it is because Ghana too is like you know everybody your own whatever not really as much as it is in Kenya but you know I think because we are all Mm, young people so we understand that people need their space so we all just sometimes we don't even see days but the days that we know that is definitely most that we see is on sunday because we would go to church together so we'd all go to church together worship pray come back home and then after that bye <laughs> so i think i've come to appreciate um the way life in kenya is everybody is like in your own space even though sometimes i miss like okay i want my family i want but i've really come to appreciate that and you know when i was in nigeria i really thought oh i'm a, I'm a very outgoing person i love going out today i'm here tomorrow i'm there i'm always somewhere and then sometimes my parents would be like what are you looking for outside and i think i was like that because of the things the circumstances right for instance, when there's no light, what am I doing inside the house? There's no light. I've pressed my phone. The battery has gone off. Like, I am bored. Maybe I've probably even used my, my power bank and that one too has gone off. And there's still no light. And I'm like, okay, now I got to freshen up and get out of here. So I leave. I go out. I go somewhere, you know, just go and chill. Maybe meet a couple of friends. Maybe just go somewhere and have fun. And I thought I was that person. But then when I moved to Ghana and I got my own apartment and I was alone, I realized that, you know, those things that I wanted to do that my parents were like, oh, don't do this. Don't stay out late. Why didn't you say you were going out? Blah, blah, blah. Now I was on my own and I could go out like anytime, any day. I could just decide, oh, today I'm not sleeping home. After all, it's my house. I locked the house. I take my key. But I realized that being alone in Ghana, I just didn't do all those things i just i just like became a totally different person and i became this person that loves my indoors more than going out like um i love my apartment to be very very comfortable because i love being in my space like i love being inside so much and then what i do i work from home so i don't have to go anywhere so most times i'm inside i'm just working on my computer all day i had an office space in the house so I can be in that space from morning to night, just on my laptop, trying to get work done. Just working, 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 working. I think the first few weeks I met my fiance in Ghana, it was even like, like he was, he was literally struggling with, between my work and him, I was struggling. Like, I want to do my work. I don't want to be, you know, just talking about whatever. But as we started to get to know each other, get to like each other, I started to remove all of that too much work that i was doing because i mean after i'm done with work i just proceed to just doing other things i can be doing work for like the next four or five days because i'm done with the day's work and i still want to keep working so all of that started to come out i think i started to know more about myself i started to discover myself that i am actually in love with being alone being by myself i'm also in love with going out so i am in the middle i am not the person that likes to be outside all day every day i can be in this house in this um house for for days sometimes i don't even go out in one full week once i stock up the house i have food i have water i'm good to go so the only time you see me outside is when i have somewhere to go like i have an appointment somewhere or I have to go create content somewhere. Then I pick my bag, I dress up, I go. The car is waiting for me outside. I go to wherever I want to go. I come back, it drops me, and I come back inside the house. And that is it. So sometimes my caretaker will call and be like, Hi, madam, I've not seen you in days, in weeks. Are you okay? Are you in the house? Did you travel? And I tell him, no, I didn't travel. I'm at home, actually. It's just, I mean, what am I doing outside? If I'm not... If I don't have any business outside, you won't see me outside. So I'm just like inside doing my thing. I come to the balcony, I go inside, I go to the garden downstairs sometimes, and that's it. So I think having left home has made me discover a lot of things about myself. And that is one thing that I now appreciate 
can you for nobody's in your face nobody's in your space when you call them they answer but ordinarily nobody's gonna come knock on your door and be like i have arrived you know and i like that actually <laughs> and one thing i would always say is this is regarding um people saying oh nigerians are a lot in kenya so one thing i would always say is there are a lot of kenyans out there like living comfortably in other countries in africa in europe and nobody's trying to chase them away so i think you get to know about a lot of nigerians in kenya because like we vlog a lot about different things we we try to give information back to our people we try to share what is going on where we are and that's how you know oh nigerians are a lot here but there are a lot of kenyans out there but because you know most are not vlogging they're not talking about the current country that they're in and all of that they think oh nigerians are everywhere and if in this day and age you're asking me what am i doing in kenya why am i not living in nigeria then my brother my sister you need to go outside and touch grass because obviously you are out of touch with what is going on in the world people are moving people are living intermarrying inter living inter whatever so people are allowed to move around and seeing as humans have legs we don't have roots it means we are supposed to move about and the health is the lord's and the fullness thereof and being his child i'm free to go anywhere in this world that i want as long as the government says okay you can come and they they i'm not doing anything illegal in the country i'm not doing anything that deserves being deported for then i have no business with anybody that feels like i shouldn't be in their country because there's absolutely nothing you can do about it come to think of it so can we can we just ditch this talk of whatever and move on to one africa i know some people say one africa is not possible but that is that is your shallow thinking one africa is possible and i think we can make it happen okay so another reason why i love living in kenya is language there's no language barrier I mean, as much as people speak Swahili, a lot of Kenyans understand English and they speak good English. So it is easy for me to communicate with people. It is easy for me to go out. Like when I first came, it was it was it was something. I was thinking, oh, how do I go out alone? You know, when my fiance is not home, how do I go out? I started to feel like, oh, I'm scared. People don't understand what I'm saying. <laughs> but now, I mean, like, I can go anywhere so the language not not being a barrier is a good thing because you can easily go to tourist attractions you can easily call a cab you can easily have conversations with vendors you can easily talk to people in the market once they understand or you tell them oh i don't speak Swahili," so they're like oh really my friend where are you from and then from there they start conversations and then you buy what you want to buy and you go home so i like the fact that kenya is is i mean People in Kenya are able to speak good English that I understand, that they understand, and we don't have that communication barrier between us, okay? So another thing that I love about living in Kenya is... Mm, 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 safety. Kenya is safe. Yes, I know people will say safety is relative, but Kenya is safe as far as I'm concerned. Like, I can go out anytime. I remember when I went to visit my clients when they came from Nigeria and it was getting to like 6 p.m., 7 p.m. And I was still like, okay, let's go shopping since you want to buy one or two things. Let me take you to the shopping mall so that we shop before I go. So we went to the shopping mall and it was getting to 7.38 and she was like, Missy, when are you going to go home? Is it not going to? Are you, are you going to be safe and everything? And I'm like, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm going to be fine. This is care. Like I just have to call a car sit in it, it takes me home when i get home it takes me to the front of my house and i i light and i go inside so one thing i love about this this thing in ghana is the fact that when it when a car is dropping you off say past 12 like when it's late literally the driver waits for you to go inside your compound before he leaves and i noticed that thing i noticed it not once not twice and i'm like hmm because, I mean, you're a lady, it is late at night, what if something happens to you? So they would wait, make sure that you get inside before they go. And I think that is really gentleman of them. That is really lovely. 
And so Kenya is safe as far as I'm concerned. Like sometimes I would always lock my door. I remember one time I locked myself outside. Hey, like I wanted to just take the trash downstairs. So I was not supposed to lock the door, but somehow I was, I was thinking about something and I'm used to locking the door. So I went outside, I left the key inside and the door was locked. So the moment I locked the door, I remembered, hey, say God, and it was early in the morning, like I've not even had breakfast. So I went to meet with the caretaker and I told him I've locked myself inside, like I locked the key inside and I don't know what to do. And I locked this door as, as well, the balcony door that I, I could have, you know, spoken with my my next door neighbor and then, you know, come in from here. But I had locked this one, I had locked that one, like, what are you locking the door for? <laughs> it was like, what are you locking the door for? You don't have to lock the door all the time. Nobody's going to do anything to you. Just leave your door. I mean, you can lock it, but don't, don't like, key it. Just leave it. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That morning, I felt so, I felt so like, oh my God. But yeah, Kenya is that safe. You can, you can be, you can be in the house. You just leave your door open. Nobody's going to come in. Nothing's going to happen. And you can go out at whatever time of the of the of the day, you know, of night, day and night. <laughs> and I think the only thing is just to, you know, be cautious, you know, walk with caution, don't go to dangerous places at night or places that are lonely and be like, Oh, nothing's gonna happen. Or you want to test your feet out well, that is up to you. I don't know. <laughs> but another thing I would say about um, safety, maybe this is not really in place of safety, but I would put it under safety. Another thing I would say is that I am really, really like comfortable enough to walk around as a lady. I don't feel like anybody is going to harass me or assault me. I feel really okay, you know. You know, in Lagos, for instance, there are places that I avoid, not because... It's just, you know, for instance, where those touts are, those boss people and whatever, or those those area boys that are just jobless, places where they, they sit and then, you know, you're just passing by, you just want to go and maybe buy something or you're just going out or stuff. I avoid those places because they will just harass you and they might not even touch you, but, you know, the way they speak to you, the way they want to, like, you know, just... It's just those things just piss me off and I try to avoid I try to avoid those those guys. I try to avoid where they are. But here in Kenya it's not like that. So you know, um when I see places where there are, you know, these boss people, this out, I don't even I don't I'm not even like feeling any kind of way. I rather walk up to them and ask them for directions. Oh, I'm going to so so please, can you direct me? And they do, you know, but it's not the same where I come from. Being a woman they tease you they they try to you know it's just it's just a lot it's just a lot so sometimes it's like you know <laughs> you know and then i'm like am i a dog what is wrong with this fool so those kind of things um i think as a woman i feel very safe in kenya most times i'm by myself like maybe my fiance is not around he has traveled for work he has gone out for work i'm by myself and i don't feel any kind of way I go wherever I want to go, I do whatever I want to do, and I feel okay. So I think that is another thing I would say about, I would say I love about, you know, Kenya. I don't feel unsafe as a woman. Another thing I love about living in Kenya is the way of life here. The way of life here is calm. I love it. It is, it is really calm. So everything is peaceful. You are you don't have to be crazy you don't have to talk dirty you don't have to talk crazy you don't have to act crazy so that people don't cheat you or you know stuff like that you're just you're just you you're just calm the way of life is is, is slower it's a slower pace it's not as crazy as lagos but i love it like i love i have always loved calm so the moment i moved out of nigeria i knew i i, I, I ain't living there anymore <laughs> i can visit even my visit does not it's, it's not even up to two weeks. Sometimes I visit nine days, ten days, I'm out. Because, like, that's that's the much I can take. Especially in Lagos. Lagos is really crazy. But the life in the life in Kenya here is really slow-paced. Everybody's just moving on their own pace. Nothing is... I mean, you're hustling, but you're not hustling in a rash way. You're not crazy. You're not... 
you know, not chasing you, you're not chasing anything, you're just calm and you're just moving, you're just doing your thing and living your life. And I love that pace. It is not too slow, it is not too fast, it is like okay and it is very developed here. So don't think maybe, oh, it's not a developed place, that's why it's slow. Uh uh. It is a very developed country, yet things are slow on, on a slow pace and I love it. So if you live in Lagos like me, you would say, oh, I can't live in a calm place. A lot of people say that, a lot of Lagosians say that, that they can't live in a calm place. Some, be, some even say they can't live in Abuja because Abuja is too slow, it's too calm. Hmm. Well, you might not like it in Kenya, but I, I assure you that the moment you try it out, you would not want to go back to that fast-paced life, that craziness and the rush and everything. So a slow and peaceful life, is a good thing and that is what Kenya offers me and I think that is what outside offers me as <laughs> um, okay I mean let's see that is what Ghana offered me that is what Kenya offers me and that is why I love these two countries so much because like things are on a slow pace you're doing your thing you're hustling but life is calm it's peaceful and that is it for me. That's all I want. I don't want too much out of life. I just want a simple, calm and peaceful life. So that Kenya does that for me. Another thing I'll say I love about living in Kenya is that being black is not a disadvantage. You can be black and happy. <laughs> I mean, like, you look like just about anybody else. And that for me is a good thing because, like, I don't have to be concerned about racism and even though you know there are different other things happening here but at least i'm not concerned about my skin color I, like. um, I mean keep my my Kenyan fans are even telling me now that i look like Kenyan. so i think you guys are feeding me well the way that is making me look like you i'm loving it <laughs> so yeah um i love that about being here and you know sometimes people be like oh why are you in another african country why don't you travel to europe why don't you go to this place why don't you go to that place well a lot of things inform our decisions all right a lot of things happen that make us take this decision that okay i want to go to Kenya. okay i want to go to ghana okay i want to go to here i want to go to there like when i went to ghana the second time the first time was for education the second time was because i just wanted to live in comfort zone i didn't want to be in the house where mommy and daddy are taking care of me i realized that i needed that push and the only way i can get that to be the person that i'm supposed to be is to leave my comfort zone nobody's taking care of me if i don't take care of myself if i don't work i don't eat if i don't work i don't pay my rent if i don't work i don't do anything virtually and i am not one of those people that will be like daddy i need money oh mommy send me no no I, I i knew i was not going to do that i knew i was going to stand my ground and work hard so me leaving nigeria to kenya at that time was because i wanted to be out of my comfort zone and become who i want to be so that helped me at that point in time coming to kenya is because i'm in love with the kenyan man <laughs> so that informed my decision so sometimes when people say oh uh go to europe go to this and i'm just like okay i need a reason to go to those places and i need to have all that i need to be there you know if i need let's say for instance right now i can afford to spend ten thousand dollars moving i want to go to a place where i'm going to spend the whole of the ten thousand dollars i'll go somewhere that i can start with five thousand right so when i start to advance when i start to grow in whatever it is i'm doing that's bringing me money i can now decide oh, now it's time to go to europe okay so that is that about that being black is not a disadvantage and i love that about living in kenya another thing i love about living in kenya is that kenyans are not materialistic okay so no one is dressing to kill anybody no one is trying to you know do things to impress anybody everybody's just living their lives on their own terms the way they want to the way it is like you know you're not trying to like oh there's an event so i'm going to wear this red boots this red hat i'm going to drive this red car and you know where i come from there's a lot of competition there's a lot of like pressure and uh, the pressure is getting worse yes so people don't buy cars because like they want to just 
they want to have a means of transportation people rather buy cars because oh this person bought a Benz 250 well i'm going to buy a Benz 400 yes you know the competition is there and like i said earlier sometimes it helps to push you to do better but sometimes it's not really necessary because it, push, it pushes a lot of people to do things that they're not supposed to do it pushes a lot of people into depression and all of that so i love it here in kenya it's kind of it's more chilled people dress and people wear whatever to wherever and it doesn't mean that they dress badly they have, they just dress chilled like, <laughs> if i can put it that way they just dress so like chilled like yeah it's just it's just an outing nothing is going on and then you 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 find out that some people might even be like okay i'm not going to buy a car now i'm going to keep using public transportation because i mean the public transportation is actually quite comfortable it's okay it's affordable so why do i have to buy a car now i'm going to buy it much later and use this money for other important things meanwhile in some places you see people buying cars they don't even have a house you know they just buy cars to just show off to just you know when they go out to their friends they are in their SUV and all of that and he doesn't have a house he's still renting a house which i think it's a very stupid life decision but like i said choices so yeah i, mean, I love that about kenya kenyans are not materialistic they're not freaked out about anything sometimes i look at my parents and i'm like See this guy, they're just too humble. Like they're just not freaked out about stuff. Like they're not freaked out about the latest iPhone, the latest shoe, the latest whatever. But they live their lives comfortably and they're okay with it. And I love it. Kenya is welcoming to everybody, right? Kenya is very friendly. It is expat friendly. You see a lot of people here, different nationalities, people in Damarin, you know, it is Kenya is global. And that's why you see Somalians have their own place in Kenya, Indians have their own place, China has their own place, everybody is just like in Kenya and Kenya is not complaining, Kenya is just open to everybody, Kenya is welcoming and I love that and I think as an expert it's it's a good place to be because you won't feel like why am I, what am I doing here in this place alone, there are so many different people here so Kenya is like open to everybody. So the next is Kenya is very versatile, okay? So in Kenya, there's nothing you cannot find. And most of my, my subscribers keep telling me that this is Kenya. Whatever you're looking for, you will find. You just have to look for it and you find it. So Kenya is very versatile. You will see China restaurants and um, supermarkets. You will see Nigerian restaurants and supermarkets. Other African countries, you will see their restaurants, supermarkets, um, where Korean restaurants and supermarkets like they just make all these things available because like those citizens are here there are people here from different places and people need their own meals right people need their own food their own clothes what they are used to so i like that they've made it they've made it um easy for people to be here as well as and it's a good thing and that speaks to being very versatile so all you just need to do when you need something and you're like oh can i find it in kenya all you just need to do is search on google and google will lead you right to the place all right so kenya is really versatile and they're welcoming of other people's businesses which makes it comfortable to live here because like you get all you need even though maybe you get them more expensive but at least it is there and being a foreigner like you just have to manage now at least you you're able to eat here and be comfortable here. Another thing I say a lot about Kenya is the fact that there are so many travel agencies and travel curators, travel individuals that are there to help you explore Kenya. Like all you just need to do is have money and then you see so many different packages. Some people are focused on tours in the northern part of Kenya, some are focused on tours in the eastern part of Kenya, in the coast, in Nairobi, some are focused on like different places, people are focused on helping you tour and experience different places in Kenya and I think that is a good thing. This makes exploring the country so easy, there are so many fun places to go, there are so many things to do, like I don't even know when I'm going to finish touring Kenya because I want to go around and see the different parts that Kenya has to offer 
but yeah we have to start somewhere and yeah here is a fun place it's a lovely place to be and on that note i think we've gone to the end of today's episode i hope you had fun watching this and you also need to tell me about the things that you love about being in kenya and living in kenya all the things you love doing in still kenya so that's that for that in case you're new here guys my name is missy you can call me the black buffalo with that brain for shiga yes and i am a fashion travel and lifestyle content creator so if you want to visit kenya or you want to explore kenya you want to relocate to kenya you want to study in kenya you want to do business in kenya and you go reach out to me let me know what you need in terms of visas in terms of accommodation money exchange what else tours of course i'm gonna take you around the cities and help you have fun in this place so guys i think we've come to the end of this episode i am so grateful that you're here that you watch this and don't forget to share this with your friends your families that want to know what or why they should come to kenya okay because these are all the things that i love and there are so much more and i'm just wondering what you would also love when you come here okay so thank you for watching and i'm gonna see you in the next one bye, bye.